share it on my uh, feed. Don, can you check also the stream line? It's good. Yeah. Not too well. It's good. So, say shalom. This is the GMS Holland Camp, together with the GMS Journey Camp. Back with another lesson. First off and foremost, we want to give all praises, glory, and the highest honor. Unto Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Kakadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles, our community, and told us the truth. Peace and blessings and salutations to the elect out there. The spirit is truth, sincerity, and also charity for the four winds. So back with another lesson. As you see the title, Rejoice and Reproof. Um, because you have to understand when you're in this truth, you're going to get a lot of correction. Man. You know, it doesn't matter which state you are. Of course, at the beginning, it's going to be more than in the when you grow older and it's truth. But nevertheless, the reproof never stops. The reproof never stops. It doesn't matter if you're the head of the camp. It doesn't matter if you are the second command, if you're the, the, the lowest among the brothers or the highest among the brothers. The reproof never stops because we are not made perfect yet. So we are, we need the reproof. And we should rejoice at that because. Can somebody give me Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 8 Babuk Shah? This is Proverbs chapter 9, verse 8. And it reads, Reproof not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. Exactly, because the, the reproof is true love. Because if a man sees that you're doing something wrong, he's going to correct you to do this right thing. So if for example, the brother tells Bashar, sees that I'm doing something wrong. He's going to come to me and tell me, hey, this is not right what you're doing to guide me in the right way. And I shall rejoice at that, even though, of course, at a certain point, when you hear the rebuke and the reproof, you're going to look at it as a, you might look at it as a negative thing because you don't want to hear these things. Because it goes against what you think or what you were thinking to be right. But... So nevertheless, you should rejoice at these things because the brother is actually showing you love and, uh, um, and the care that he has for you. And the care that he has for you because he thinks about your situation. He tell, you tell him about something, he thinks about it, he meditates upon it, how, how you can make it better. So he goes in depth, thinking, meditating, offering up his time to make you better. He could also just do his own thing but he sacrifices time and his effort to make you better because you're part of the body and he has to love towards you. Somebody can give me also a... Yeah. Uh, you you want to say something? I have the, I have the meaning of reproof. So. The word reproof, it says, accuse, charge as fault. It says reproof uh, from French, reprouvé, accuse... Blame, disapprove, reject, condemn. It says, re cobare, prove to be worthy. Hey, that's crazy. Yep. But because we always uh, speak on uh, prove thyself, right? Yeah. Okay. But um, if you uh, reprove somebody, that means you disagree or dis. Um, what did it say? disapprove the things that he has been doing so then you speak on that you accuse and blame you might uh, you know it goes hand in hand with accusing and blaming him for certain things and he needs to stand corrected on that because it also says reprove is um rebuke address addressed to a person you see so that's what um what reprove goes into man Can I say something also? Because uh, people always say you can't judge a person, you can't say you know anything about a person. But the thing is, a spiritual man, he is going to 
reflect on himself and also reflect on the the men that he's walking with. He's gonna hold the the law in his hand, you know, the the law of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, and be like, hey, the thing that you're doing right now is a, is against what the Most High wants, you know. So he's going to point that out, and that's that's a sign of love, you know. Okay. That's not a sign of you know I want to keep you down. I want to. Uh, um, Keep you in a low position or or you know just want to break your spirit no man it's just to make you better to make us in the whole better you know yeah. i got a precept exactly. also go give me the precept this is uh proverbs 1 verse 5 a what a wise man will hear and will increase learning and a man of understanding shall attain unto wisdom uh, wise counsels exactly this is what you need to be doing you need to attend to the wise counsel because certain men come with you um, about certain issues to correct you because they went through them themselves already, you know? They went through them themselves already. They have the experience with it. So with the experience comes the um, understanding because the understanding of the outcome. They know what the end gonna be if you keep going down that road because they went through it already. So they have the understanding of the outcome so they're going to correct you on it they're going to try to guide you in the right direction you don't make the same mistake as them so of course like i said before and like i also said it's going to seem like a blame you know it seems like a reject uh, like he going to uh, it's rejecting you or something like a negative thing but actually it's a positive thing you only have to humble down and listen and follow their advice because ultimately like we always say in the camp when we teach and speaking, we are men of the Lord, right? So we see each other as men of the Lord teaching the word of the Heavenly Father. So the same essence, so it's the same essence, you have to see a, a brother as a man of the Lord correcting you. As Samuel went to the people and corrected them, as Jeremiah or Isaiah, it's the same thing. You know? Yeah, I, yeah. I have um, the word reproof goes into re rebuke. What did it mm -hmm. say? It said, rebuke um so like it said rebuke addressed to a person so when you go to rebuke it says it said um to reprimand reprimand so i was like that's an interesting word so now i go into the word reprimand it says a formal expression of disapproval Okay, but then when you go deeper, it says reprimand a severe or formal criticism to criticize. Mm -hmm. It says a person severely, especially from a position of authority. So rebuke often comes from, it's, it's, it's harsh criticism that comes from a position of authority, man. You see, that's why the scripture also says, let me grab it real quick. It says this, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 1, Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren. So you always have to be mindful of how you speak to people that are uh, set over you, man. Okay? Always be mindful of how you, how you approach them when they make a mistake. Because, you know, the, the point is... None of us is perfect, you know, and, and the, the Matthew 7 and the Luke 8 often gets pushed or pulled like um, judge, not, judge, judge not least to be judged and that some, some people are found hypocrites and oftentimes, you know, those people that are in a, a, a leadership position are being looked at fast when they mess up, okay? That's James 3 and 1. Be not many masters because the greater condemnation you will get. Not only by the heavenly father, but also by the people, man. Because when you are in a leadership, uh, leadership position or when you are in the position of authority, when you fuck up, that's when everyone is leaping on you, man. Everyone is jumping on you instantly, man. But when you knew into this truth and you got put into a certain position of uh, arranging certain things, nobody is really able to flip on your ass because, you know, brother's going to look at you like, yeah, he knew anyway. Who gave him the task? Who gave him the task to do this thing? And yeah. then 
the eyes are being pointed at the guy that was in the leadership position that gave him the task, and then he's going to get jumped on. This thing actually happened with us in, uh, uh, in, in GMS Camp Holland, man. A brother was pretty new in the camp, and he had to fix the meat for the Pesach. And he messed it up totally. He messed it up totally. But then brothers was getting angry at him. But then we came to the realization like, okay, but who gave him the task to do it? And then we pointed at the guy in the leadership position, the brother in the leadership position. And we said, hey, you should, not, should have never given him um, uh, the position to, to actually do these things, man. You understand? So... Here it says, 1 Timothy 5 and 1, Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father and the younger man as brethren. You see that? So, um, the word entreat. It says, Paracleo. To call to one side. Call for, summon, to address, speak to. It says, which may be done in the way of exhortation, entreaty, comfort, instruction. Okay? So you entreat the person. So an elder, a man that is set up above you, you have to use words that are more comforting than, than, than you would use with, with other men. Okay? But then, do not forget, it also says in the same verse, and the younger man as brethren. Okay? Not as their boss or not as their um, their um, commanding officer. You know, not like that. Because you always I also said, if someone of you can grab that in uh, Matthew, uh, Matthew, um, Matthew 20 and 25, if someone can grab that. So what was the title again, Tazawa? Um, rejoice and Reproof. Okay, Rejoice and Reproof. So in order to be able to rejoice and reproof, the one that is being the one that is being reproved has to understand that is the reproof is is given to make him better. Criticism, like we read earlier, reproof goes into sharp criticism. Okay. If I if I'm a painter. If I'm a painter, what up? I see, I hear a little bit of echo and I checked the video also. That's why I was busy. Um, I don't know where it's coming from because I muted myself and it was still there. I see, I hear a little bit of echo and I checked the video also. That's why I was busy. Let me mute. I don't know where it's coming from because I muted myself. Well, Let no. me know if it's, uh, if it's my uh, my fault. It wasn't the echo, it was like a surrounding sound. I think from okay, Then it's good. Then I was good. So, like, I didn't want to cut you off. So, what was I saying? Yeah, so if I'm a painter, if yeah. I'm a painter, yeah. uh, like an artist, right? And I make uh, I make beautiful paintings, but then a man that has been painting for many more years, man, comes like a Bob Ross, and he comes to check out my painting, and he has criticism on my painting. I'm gonna be like, listen, man, this guy, he's been in it, he's been in it for the longest, man. The criticism that he gives me is going to make my paintings better eventually. So that's that's why it says love, love, you should love reproof, man, because it is given, uh, uh, it's supposed to be given by a way that the, the one that gets reproved understands that it is to make him better. Now, some people, they give rebukes or reproof just to show themselves uh, to be in a power position, man, or in an authority type tip. Okay, and that's not good. Okay, and this is also the reason why some uh, brothers have a hard time accepting reproof and rebukes because it comes by way of authority rather than uh, uh, by a way to make uh, the one that is being reproved better. So bring out the Matthew. Matthew 20 and 25. But Yahweh Shai called them unto them and said, Ye know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. Yeah, 
so that's something of the gentiles man okay you should not be you should not be um rejoicing in um having authority over someone else man okay you should you should um be um mature in in that position that is given unto you by Yahweh Bashmi on shy on top of that this is this is also the reason why we see so certain men are taken away from that position man because they have a hard time dealing with um, with this authority okay you do not exercise authority over each other but you do have authority so for you not exercising it doesn't mean that you don't have authority over other brothers because there is clearly a ranking system and a hierarchy within the body of Yahweh Shemir Shai. But exercising authority means like you put the hammer down. This will go happen. And you know, like that, which is not good. Okay. It says the servant of the of the Lord must not strive, right? Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 24. And the servant of Yahweh must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. You see? In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, oppose themselves. If the Most High preadventure would will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. So that's where the reproof comes in. They go against the truth. They battle against certain scriptures. They battle against certain uh, uh, orders that are given out. Now, that's where the where the uh, the right mentality has to come in. Whether you're gonna bring down Thor's hammer, smash it on the ground, and use lightning, you know, with your reproofs, or you show him, you criticize him sharply, so he gets the bigger picture of the whole matter. Okay, you want him to 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 stay. You want him to keep a stable mind within this truth, right? You don't want him to become unstable and be all in his emotions. And now he rather he's rather uh, 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 home alone than by uh, uh, you know than close to the brothers. You don't want to, you you don't want him to you don't want to put him in that situation. You want to push him in that situation. You see? Yeah, that's why you got it. Um, yeah, because also what you have to understand, you need to have a certain skill with the reproving. You need to also know the men that you reprove. Because not every other like the brother was going into, not every man can take the hammer. Certain men need a softer approach. Certain men need a harder approach. You know, like I was talking also here in the uh, camp of Germany, and I told brothers like, with me, I know I'm a hardhead man. Sometimes I need it. I need to um, hear a little bit more harsh, man. And of course, you personally have to work also on that how you receive and accept the rebuke, because not everyone is about the harshness. Not everyone is about the softness. So you have to deal, learn to deal with every individual brother in his truth. The, the man that is rebuking and also the man that received the rebuke. Can somebody also give me real quick the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3 and um, verse 16? Public show. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of the Most High and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Exactly, and that's what it is because the the scriptures guide us into how to review, how to reprove, how to correct that we all go into righteousness. They will all attain unto the righteousness. Like it also speaks about in Hebrews the twelfth chapter. Because we get chastised by the Heavenly Father, we corrected by him. It is not um it is grievous unto us right now, but it brings a peaceful fruit fruit of righteousness. It's the same thing with us rebuking each other in the truth. With us going on each other because we all just want the betterment of the church. We want us to make it unto what? Unto the salvation. We all want to obtain the salvation. So we have to understand that these things are going to happen unto us. And you have to humble down as a man and accept these things. You know? Because the spirit... Echo? Can you say something? Is there still echo? No, I don't hear no more. I think it's good now. Yeah. So as I was saying, you as a man have to humble has to humble down though. 
down now because you also have to, um, in the flesh, the age difference. For example, you have a man that is second in command, but he's 20 years old. And then you have a man that is third in command, but he's 40 years old. He could be his father, so to speak. So what is now? Now the second command has to rebuke him on something that he did wrong. And how are we going to react? So there the humility has to kick in. From the man that is old in the world, but at the same time also the man that is ranked higher than him has to understand that in the world, he will be older than him. But still in the spirit, he's hanged, ranked higher than him. So it's all about humility. And through humility, you're going to grow. Because if you're a hardhead, if you don't want to listen, if you're prideful, you won't grow. Because you think you know it all. And we all know these guys in the world. These know yeah. they know it all. Because if they know Proverbs it all... Chapter. Yeah, give me the scripture. This is Proverbs chapter, 20, uh, Proverbs chapter 1, uh, verse 23. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Can you break down? So, if you turn to the reproof, that means you are listening to the criticism. You're listening to the correction. Okay, now who is doing the correction for the Heavenly Father? Those are the men of the Lord. The men of the Lord are reproving people. So, when the Heavenly Father says, turn to my reproof, he calls you and, 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 and invites you to come and listen at what you should do better and what you're doing wrong and what you're doing good. You see? So it says, turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour my spirit unto you. I will make you, I will make known my words unto you. So the more you listen, the more the Heavenly Father is going to give you in, in the sense of understanding and wisdom. The more you take heed, the more you're going to understand. The more you take heed, the more wisdom you're going to get. You see? The Heavenly Father blesses you with that. And in verse... Um, Prophet chapter 1 verse um, 25 it shows you that the reproof is being done by the man of the Lord because it says but ye have set at naught all my counsel and would none of my reproof you see that so nobody wanted to be corrected nobody, nobody wanted to take heed to the criticism that is being given unto the people by the servants the prophets by the servants by the disciples by the apostles Okay, they had the spirit. Nobody wanted to listen to that. Okay, the, and this is also mentioned in prophecy. Do in due to, uh, um, throughout the, throughout the generations, Israel was not listening. Now, when you find yourself in the camp, when you find yourself teaching in the highways and byways, and reproofs come your way, you also have to understand that the heavenly Father is speaking through men. The heavenly Father is speaking through those men that have His Spirit. Okay. Yeah. I have a precept on that. So I'm giving a precept. This is Hosea 12, verse 10. I have also spoken by the prophets, and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. Heavy. Yeah, man. You want to speak on it? Yeah, so it's, it's basically like uh, what the brother was going into. You pray for uh, to make it in the kingdom of heaven. You pray to, to be accounted worthy. But then when the men of the world, or not men of the world, but men that are in the world, uh, speak to you, speak the words of Yahweh Shem Yahweh unto you, it might be harsh, it might be this or that, but you ask for it. You ask for advice. You ask for guidance. And then uh, to immediately slap away the hand or not to to accept it you know that's that's foolishness that's stupid you know of course it's always gonna yeah it's gonna hurt certain people you know the bible cuts you when when certain things uh you have already changed so much and then you're like okay now i'm doing good because you are doing better then now we're going to um the the, the rough edges are gone now so now we're going to um, fine tune it so still there's always uh room for you to be fine-tuned man and don't let your emotions get the, get the best of you because that's always you know the flesh wants to react first but then 
sit down. You know, I'm personally speaking out, speaking out of uh, uh, experience. You know, you're always like, no, no, that's automatic what you want to do. No, I already, uh, I'm, I'm doing the right thing and stuff like that. But when you sit down and be like, yeah, yeah, there's still room for improvement, man. So the men of the Lord, the wise counsel, take heed to it. They, they are taking care of the flock, you know, to the best of their abilities. That they're just uh, keeping an eye on everybody and also um, um, rebuke and reprove is, is needed, man. Yep. I have a scripture. This is uh, Proverbs chapter 12, verse 1. Whoso loveth instruction, loveth knowledge. Hmm. He that hated reproof is brutish. Okay, so when we go to the word brutish, so let me read it again. Whoso loveth instruction, loveth knowledge. And like we just read, the Heavenly Father is going to increase knowledge unto those that turn to his reproof. So those that turn to the reproof of the Heavenly Father acknowledge the scriptures that are being used to criticize you or correct you in your ways, the way you're operating in life. If you take heed to that, the Heavenly Father is going to increase knowledge unto you. So what does it say here? Whoso loveth instruction, loveth knowledge. Because that's what you're going to get, more knowledge. But he that hated reproof is brutish. Let's look up the word brutish. The word there in the Hebrew is bayar. It says stupidity um, of cattle. So you, you are like a beast. You're like an animal. Uh, let me see if it goes into that over here. It says of cattle. But I know when you look up brutish here, and I'm going to read verse 2 also, by the way. That's why I have to check this thing out real quick. Brutish meaning. Yeah, animal-like. It says animal-like, resembling or characteristics of a brute. It says heavy, dull, stupid. It says um, an extremely violent or wild person or animal. So you're behaving like a beast, man. Now we all know that the scripture says if you do not have understanding, you are like a beast. Asap mentioned that. He said... I was like a beast before thee because I was I lacked understanding. Now, if you do not like to be reproved, then you don't do not like knowledge. So then eventually you're gonna be brutish because you don't you lack understanding. You're gonna be animal-like. Okay? So Proverbs 12 and 1. Whoso loveth instruction, loveth knowledge, but he that hated reproof is brutish. Verse 2: A good man obtained favor of the lord but the man of wicked devices will he condemn so when are you a good man you are a good man if you take heed to the word the words of yahweh take reproof take rebuke follow instruction then you are found a good man in the sight of the most high so then guess what you get you uh, you get favor of the lord you know it says a good man obtained favor of the lord that's why the scripture also says, uh, he, um, what does it say again? Whosoever keepeth the law of the Most High, he make it even his enemies to be at peace with him. Something to that effect. Yeah. So it says the word favor in the Hebrew, ratazawan. It says pleasure, delight, favor, goodwill, acceptance. Goodwill, favor, will, desire. Okay, you become acceptable in the eyes of the Most High, man. That's when you get favor from the Lord. You become acceptable, and He's going to help you, guide you through all the things that you have to deal with. Precept. This is um, First Peter's, First Peter's 2, verse 18. Servants, be ye subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the forward. For this is thankworthy if a man for conscience towards Yahweh Bashem Yahashai endure grief, suffering wrongfully. And that's what we need to be doing, man. Suffering wrongfully because sometimes at a certain point, the correction might not be even on point, man. The correction might not be even correct. 
um, for the situation, but you just suffered because somebody that is higher above you or somebody that is outranking you is doing it. And then in a later point, your husband is gonna um, have a have fruit because a man that is above this man might be like, hey, actually I was wrong with that and he was correct. But we have to suffer that. And this truth is all about suffering because Heavenly Father actually rejoices at our sufferings. Yeah. You know, he rejoices at our suffering. So this is why we have to accept the rebukes. We have to accept the correction. And sometimes you go hard against them. Huh? Sometimes you go hard against them, but it's all for your betterment. And that's why you should rejoice and love the rebuke. You know, what's up? You want to say something? Yeah, it's like what uh, Tazaba was reading uh, before this. It said, um, the most high, is, what was it? The most high is going to increase you. You're going to have favor. The most high is going to have favor towards you if you um, behave like that. This goes hand in hand with uh, this scripture. For this is thankworthy if a man for conscience sake towards the most high endure grief. So the most high, um, it's like, yeah, the point is also in the next verse. Let me read that first. First Peter 2, verse 20. For what glory is it? When ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently. But if, when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. So you are going to have favor with Yahweh Bashem Yahushai if also, you know, the, the um, pointing out the rebuke was not on point, but still because you um, had, you put yourself in subjection. That's important to the Most High. Humble yourself, you know. Listen to the rebuke. Even though the men above you, they also um, they are learning, you know. Maybe it's the first time he rebukes a, a brother like that, and then other elders they uh, take him to the side like, "Hey, Nam, and that's what you did there, you know. That's not how it goes and stuff like that." Or, you know, so just humbly take it and. In the meantime, in the end of the road, it's going to be made manifest. The Most High, He's going to have favor on how you took it, you know, that you humbled yourself. Oh. Also, I have a scripture real quick. Um, it's the book of Proverbs, uh, Sarah chapter 5 and verse 11. Be swift to hear and let thy life be sincere and with patience give answer. And this goes into what the brother was going into because it goes hand in hand with what he was saying. Because the first reaction of a man when he gets reproved, so like, or rebuked is um, a counter reaction. He like, oh no no no, it's not like that. It's like this. Oh, it's not like that. It's like that. But you should just first listen to it, let it sunk in, and then with patience with answers, so come back after two or three days. You know, you should not have an instant reaction to the situation because it. Um, you might gonna act on your emotions, you know. You might act on your emotions and not according to the facts, because emotions are always involved with the reproof and rebuke. Because something gonna you're gonna be cut, like the scripture says in Hebrews chapter four, the word of the heavenly Father is sharper than any two-edged sword. So the heavenly Father's word is a sword. So we're gonna be corrected with the word of the heavenly Father. It's gonna cut us. It's a two-edged sword, you know. So this is why with patience give answer. What you want to say, about? Mm, I don't know if it's really fitting, but if you look at it this way, you can even look at the way your parents raised you, for example, with you and your younger sibling. Because with the older sibling, it was a new stage for them. In parents, for example, and now give you that they first do mistakes or do things wrong or not how they should be or supposed to be. But then with time, they get used to it and they know what's right and what's good. And later then with the second child, for example, they know what they have to do and when they have to do it. Yeah. Or, for, or for example, in sports, you have the same coach, if it's a new coach. Exactly. That's what you have like to go to what I was saying, because that's the example that he gave concerning the leaders. Because certain leaders might be new in this position, so you also have to be patient with them. You know, you can't accept expect the 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 leader, even though he, for example, is only one year older than you, the truth to be perfect, man. You can accept of no expect expect of no man to be perfect. Not the man that received the rebuke or the man that gets the rebuke. You know? But um do your brother have uh, brothers have anything else? I have something. Yeah. But not not a scripture. 
because yeah. because um, sometimes, often when uh, like you said, the Hebrews four, the mm -hmm. sword of the Most High, the word of the Most High is like a two-edged sword. You know, it, yeah. it cuts you. But then sometimes it's the demon that gets cut within you. Yep. You know, because if you look up the word demon, you know, it also goes into very skillful and wise, you know. So sometimes those thoughts come into your mind like, hey, if I play like this and this and that, then, you know, I'm going to, it's everything is going to turn out in my favor. But that's a demon talking to you. And then when uh, the, the spirit of the Mosai is there in that council, you know, that cuts straight to that, through that shit. And then at the end, you're going to be like, ah, yeah, yeah, that was a demon. Yeah. You know? Yeah, man. And that demon, that same demon is what feeds the flesh. And what is the, oftentimes an automatic reaction to uh, to a, a, a reproof or rebuke is to try and justify yourself. Now, what does the scripture say? In no wise speak against the truth, but be abashed for your mistakes, for your errors, right? In the book of Sarah. So that also shows you that you're supposed to take take the blows, take the hits for, for, for the uh, fuck-ups that you did, man. You got to just take them, man. And those and those blows that you get are also there to make you better, man. They are there to make you better, to make you a more uh, wise and uh, acceptable man. And if you if you slither your way out of it, then how how you how are you ever gonna learn to to take those hits, to take those blows, and to you know reflect on the things that you do right and do wrong? You will never, man, because you always find a, 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 an excuse or you always find a way to, you know, justify yourself in, in your errors, man. Yeah. I got two scriptures. This is the one that you just uh, paraphrased. This is Sirach 4, verse 25. In no wise speak against the truth, but the, be abashed of the error of thine ignorance. Yeah, man. So when the truth comes out and you know it is, it is the truth, you should never speak against it as if it if it's not as if it's not the truth, man. That makes you a piece of shit. You see, you have to admit, yes, I fucked up. Yes, that is the truth, and I shouldn't have done it. Stupid of me. That is the right way. That's why it says, "Be abashed for the error of your of your ignorance." Abashed means to be ashamed. Okay. Now, what does the scripture say? Before honor comes humility. You have to be in a, a, a humble. And the word humility comes from the word humble. So you need to be in a humble state of mind in order to grow, in order to become better, and in order to receive that honor eventually. So yeah, man, I have to dip out. Y'all brothers, just go on with your, what y'all doing, man. You know, fire lesson, man. Shalom. 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 You got another precept? Go. This is Sirach 32, verse 17. A sinful man will not be reproved but find it an excuse according to his will. Exactly. And this is what was brother was going into, the slithering out of every situation, you know, and some, because we did, listen, in the world, you was able to do these things, man. You was avoiding certain troubles. You was finding excuses, but in the truth, the scriptures speak about lying not one to another. So how is it, if you really did something wrong, how are you going to come out of it? You have to lie. So if you applied in the scripture that you should not lie one towards another, you won't lie. So you should not find a, a way for your, um, it's like you should not find a way out of the rebuke with lies and only because you don't want to suffer. Man. And this is the thing. You have to be willing to suffer in this truth. And you really see that in the rebukes and the reproof because you have to be willing to suffer. It is not, it's not the, like, let me read the matter of fact real quick in the book of Hebrews. It's the book of Hebrews chapter 12 and verse, um, 11. Now no chastening for the present seems to be joyous, but grievous. See, so the chastening, the correction that you receive of the Lord, it might be through a man of the Lord, might you might be through a person of your household. It is not rejoicing, it is grievous, you know. It is grievous for you. Nevertheless, afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So if you take the rebuke and take the correction. And you are trained there with, it's going to bring righteousness unto you. So you have to accept it and not find a way 
as a sinful man because we want to turn away from sin and unto righteousness. Okay? So this is what you have to learn. And this is really the focus of this video. You should rejoice at the, re at the reproof and the rebuke because it is working something greater in you. And if you don't see the end result, if you don't look further, because when you get rebuked, it's like a, it's like a, um, a wall in front of you, you know? But if you don't look past that wall and towards the goal, the end line, the finish line, then you will st stand there and be like, I don't want to uh, go past that it because it's too hard. It's too harsh. You know, you have to climb that wall and go over it, over this obstacle. You don't want to do that. But you have to look past that because we're looking for righteousness. You know, we want to attain the kingdom. So you have to look past that and strive for it. And yeah, it's going to be tough and sometimes it's going to be hard. But you have to suffer these rebukes. You got something else, what is it? Yeah, I'm looking uh, something on a positive note because to, to that we have to rejoice in that you can look forward to because it's exactly what you're you know going into. Yeah. Go. Uh, you know, because this is the thing, because you have to understand you when, when you get rebuked, you should meditate upon why you get rebuked. This is really the question why you get rebuked right now. This is what the scriptures speak about. Be swift to hear. And let the life be sincere and with patience give answer. Because you got two ears to listen, one mouth to speak, man. Just sit down and listen. Be like, okay, cool, yeah, this this is going on. Okay, I did this wrong, this one just jumped on me. I asked for correction, I asked for guidance. So now it's, it's happening to me. So don't be shocked if the Heavenly Father is fulfilling your prayers. <laughs> you know, because you asked for something, you believe that it's going to happen. So don't be surprised when it's going to happen. Because rebuke and rebuke are a major thing of the truth, man. You know? And if, and um, did you read, uh, uh, can you give me Proverbs 27 and 5? I also have uh, your favorite scripture. Let me get it real quick. This is uh, Psalms 141, verse 5. Let the righteous smite me, it shall be a kindness, and let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil which shall not break my head, for yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities. Exactly. See, so let the righteous smite me. You know? What does it say? It's, let the righteous smite me, it shall be? Yeah. Let the righteous smite me, it shall be a kindness. See, it shall be a kindness. So it's smacking your face. Blah! It shall be a kindness because he is smacking your face in the right direction. He's showing you, no, to go this way. Don't go this way. Go this way. This way, what you're going in right now is leading up, leading up to death. But you want to go that way that leads unto life. You know? And then the correction of the righteous man is an excellent oil, like we like an anointing. It's to bless you, to make you perfect, to guide you in the right way. This is how you have to see the correction that the Heavenly Father is bringing to the brothers around you. You know? And sometimes you just need to shut the fuck up. <laughs> Like, like several brothers say, you need to shut the fuck up. That's really what it is. And it's hard. Because, for example, I myself, I like to talk a lot. So sometimes I just also need to be quiet and just listen. Because the brothers are there to correct you, to guide you, and to keep your head straight focused on the mission and on the goal line. You know, they want to get all the distractions out of your frame that you focus and make it. You know? Because, Gabal, can you give me real quick the Proverbs? This Proverbs 27 and 5. Open rebuke is better than secret love. See, open rebuke is better than secret love. That's what it is. Because I can love you secretly, but be like, oh, you're going down the way of death. I'll be like, yeah, just go ahead, brother. You know? But open rebuke is better because that's true love. Open rebuke is the true love that we need, that is necessary and is true. Because without it, we are lost. And um, hey, what's up? can you read the scripture again? It's beautiful. This is Psalms 141, verse 5. Let the righteous smite me, it shall be a kindness, and let them Salakia, and let him reprove me, it shall be an excellent oil which shall not break my head, yeah. for yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities. Exactly. See that it shall not break you, and that's the point. It is it, the rebuke won't destroy you. It might break you down, yes, but it's not only that they can build you up again. Because you have to understand, you yourself are as a temple, right? And the temple is out of, made out of many bricks. So sometimes 
you might be broken down and then you get edified, which means to build up again. You know, so this is a process of the Lord. So understand that and humble yourself because you need that. Because if you don't have to review, it is, it is, it's, it's not looking good for you. It's not looking good. I'm just checking for a scripture. So like yeah, another uh, example, also like what you said, uh, for mm -hmm. example, a bone. If a bone breaks and then it gets healed, it yep. gets stronger at that point where it broke. It's not going to break at that same uh, specific point again. You know, just like the brother said, uh, if you go through these things, you're going to be broken down. You're going to f feel hurt. But the next time when you go through these things, you know, it's, it's to, to make you yourself harder and so that you can, uh, um, you know, it's to build you up, actually. Yeah. Also got a scripture real quick. Yeah. Um, this is Titus 1 and 13. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. And this is what the rebuke is all for. That we be sound in the faith. That we be accounted worthy for the Heavenly Father. You know? It's all for the point that we be deemed worthy. Be judged worthy of the Lord when he comes back. Of what? Of the salvation. You know? This is all we're striving for, right? This is what we're in this truth. That we obtain the salvation. So this is why the brothers are checking you. And this is why brothers are harsh on you sometimes. And But like the scriptures say also, um, if we judge ourselves, we shall not be judged. Why? Because you correct yourself already. So you should go first into yourself before you uh, uh, reprove, rebuke others, rebuke yourself. But nevertheless, don't be also only self-centered. Look at the whole picture, you know, because we got different camps. Like, for example, the brother from uh, the brother got this up and the brother does Bashar are from Holland, but still they have an eye over here onto us in Germany. Goodbye and I are in Germany, but we also look towards Holland. So we are one body, we are one big body. So understand and rebuke one another, but not for the, for the reason of pride or for the reason of um, showing authority, but for the betterment of brothers that they be sound in the faith, you know. Yeah, got anything else? No. Yeah. If you have nothing else, I have nothing else also. Also nothing else like it. Then um, I think we're going to close the lesson. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, yeah. If, no, if you have something, just bring it out. <laughs> no, Look at that real quick. It's a problem. You know? Let everything come out. Sakariya 2. Mm -hmm. See you real quick. Brother, checking real quick the scripture. Let me check the comment board. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's beautiful. This is Zechariah 2, verse 10. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for lo, I come and I will dwell in the midst of thee, said Jehovah. And many nations shall be joined to Yahweh in that day, and shall be my people, and I will dwell in the midst of thee, and thou shalt know that Yahweh, power of hosts, has sent me unto thee. Yeah, man, so, you know, this is the end goal, that we are going to rejoice in Yahweh, Bashem Yahushai. He is going to dwell within us, you know, in the midst of us, in the kingdom. You know, many people are going to be joined unto unto. Uh, it's going to seem like it's many nations, but it's only Israelites that are going to be um, in that authority type uh, status, you know, because we have different, different, um, how do you call it, skin color, tone, um, yeah. in the truth. So it's going to seem like many nations, but it's actually the nation of Israel that's going to rejoice in Yahweh Bashem Yahushai at the end of the day, man, because the Most High is going to dwell with us. Now he's also dwelling within us in the little sanctuary that we are right now you know the, the the camps and the ministry but in that day it's going to be well known you know exactly that's what it is man so that's what we strive for like the brother said for the great day that every father says the great the, the good and faithful servant wait for the same you know so for that take the reproof take the rebuke take the correction even though it might seem grievous at the time, but at the end, it's just for your betterment, man. So with that, we want to give all praises, glory, the highest honor, 
unto Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem and Kakudash. Double honors to the elders and the pastor of Mirson. Who told us the truth, peace and blessings, salutations to you later out there. Until next one. Shalom. Shalom.